What's up, good people? It's your man, Jay Debonair, man, back for Cigar Culture. Uh, getting ready to shoot down to the Cigar Lounge. Uh, but before I do, I think I'm going to do me a nice little review. So, I figure I'm going to toast up me a Moo Weight. For those of you who don't know what a Moo Weight is, that is a My Uzi Weighs a Ton by Drew Estate. You know what I'm saying? My Uzi Weighs a Ton by Drew Estate. I don't know if you can see that real good, but, uh, right? So, uh, this is a pretty much a medium body stick, and uh, which is what I like. Um, Gordo size, again, something I like. And um, we're gonna go ahead and light this up, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on it, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I already didn't cut it, so let's light it up. Let's see what we get. That ain't good. That's not good. We're gonna always go back to what we know works. Plus, not to put very much butane in that one. So, we've got our uh, little long stem matches. And I think one reason, even though, uh, you know, you talk to a lot of cigar aficionados and they'll tell you, oh, you gotta use a split, a cedar split, or matches, long stem matches, don't use the little cheap matches. I get it, I get it. These are okay. But still, that little red tip you see there is sulfur. So you definitely want to burn that off. And I usually always have two matches. I always start with two. So I'll go ahead and give it a light. And I'll wait a minute until that sulfur burns off. And then I'll turn this way a little bit, you know. Turn it so that that flame will begin to light it that way. And then just hold it right below. And more than likely, you're probably gonna need two. But you can get it going with one if you just focus strictly on uh, using long matches. You know, don't get into those other kind of cheap looking matches or what have you. And so, kind of get it going, go around it, you know. And then, if you don't have any more matches, then these are your last two, which just isn't for me, but just in case it was, go ahead and All right. Yep, burning nicely now. Not a whole lot of smoke output right now, but the flavors are nice. I haven't picked up anything specific yet, uh, but we'll be back in a minute to discuss the first third. I'll get at you in a minute. Hold it back. Yeah, we into the first third now. And, uh, it's real good, nice, uh, nice sweet flavors, kind of like a sweet tobacco. Um, you know, a little bit of, almost like a, almost like a, like a honey, almost. You know, not really, but like a honey, I guess you could say that. But yeah, uh, so far so good. I mean, even burn, medium body. I forgot to mention earlier too that the smell before I lit it was kind of a, you know, like a barnyard kind of smell, like a hay smell, like a big bales of hay somewhere. Uh, but certainly the actual mouthfeel is light. The smoke output is, up the foot is, is nice as you can see, but the actual draw, um, you know, it's, it's, it's medium. You know, medium, medium smoke feel. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. But the flavors are nice. But the one nuance I picked up was a little bit of a, a honey flavor. Other than that, we off to a good start. Oh yeah, yeah, we back, baby. Hey, we into the second third. Man, the sweetness has deepened. It is really getting good, people, <laughs> for sure. I know a lot of people don't do cigar reviews while they're driving, and generally I don't. But I was just in the mood for a, a Drew Estate, Mosey Waste a Ton, you know what I'm saying? I was just in that kind of mood. Um, hold on, notice my phone's shaking a little bit, but we'll be all right. Anyway, um, believe it or not, I got into Drew Estate cigars really based on their flavor line. That's how the first time I actually had one. Um, 
I think I was offered a Kuba Kuba, and I was offered some of their natural stuff. And um, it was good, you know. At the time, I was a, I was a newbie smoker, so I was willing to try things that tasted like something. And coffee and and uh, sweet flavors are something that most people can relate to. You know, you can tend to pick up sweet, salty, sour, you know, that that sort of thing. You know, and so. I started with those, and then I got into their natural line, which is supposed to be a non-infused cigar, which I imagine, I don't know how they do it, but my guess is they would take the cigars and they would lay them around or keep them in humidors that had coffee nuances or uh, different other types of things like cinnamon and nutmeg. And I imagine if you leave it around that long enough, you know, for months and months, and humidify them in those elements. It's crazy. And humid, humidify those in those elements. I think that that's how they get those leaves to uh, get those flavors in them. And that's how I got started. And then I began to realize they had other lines that were coming out. You know, uh, they had the uh, Kentucky Fire and stuff like that. And these were, you know, certainly not infused flavors but they were flavors that you know that were just different and i think that's one thing that makes drew estate different from a lot of other cigar makers is that they're willing to go off the you know they're willing to go off the radar to try something different you know they're willing to take chances and i like companies like that you know i like companies that's willing to take a chance and say hey you know we think that there's a market for this unusual uh, flavor profile let's try it and they go out on a limb and they do it and somehow they manage to be successful and I think that's important in business to yeah you want to pick something that you have a good chance of it working you don't want to just throw money to the wind but I also think that understanding that there's an audience out there that that's interested in trying things you know there's an experimental audience out there and uh, I think when they decided to try and go into this flavor you know these different types of flavors I think they work for them, you know, and they're still successful right now. And uh, this particular one here is not a flavored cigar by any means, but it does have a ton of flavor. You can just tell when you smoke a cigar, you can really pick those flavors out that people took time, they took effort to put ingenuity into arranging the leaves in such a way for it to produce these sorts of flavors. All right, we're around the just about the halfway point with the move weight my Uzi weighs a ton by Drew Estate I like how that sounds move weight Drew Estate I like that yeah it's the move weight by Drew it's the move weight by Drew Estate I like how that sounds yeah my Uzi weighs a ton you know what I mean you know what's funny you know the when you think about terms like Uzi and how much it weighs, you would think that this would be a full body monster of a stick with a title like that. You know what I'm saying? My Uzi weighs a ton. When in reality, it's not like that at all. It's really a nice medium smoke. It even says it on the cigar band, you know? So I thought that was a little ironic. But yeah, right now we're getting a lot of uh, the same flavors, still a little bit of spice, and not a whole lot at the halfway point yet, uh, but we're just getting to it. So we're going to keep on rolling and see where it takes us but uh right now it's a nice uh, smooth sweet stick still with the honey and kind of cocoa flavors you know no cedar you know nothing like that but still nice sweetness really really good so that's where we at and uh i'll be back once we get closer to the end of the third and uh see what we get Right now, we smooth sailing, baby. What up, though? Yeah, we're nearing the end of the Moo Weight. You know, Drew Estates, Mosey weighs a ton. Six by 60 Gordo. Uh, pretty much medium body smoke. This is, uh, it's nice, man. It is a total medium, in my view, uh, up to this point. But um, it's definitely the, the spice and the heat done wrapped up. I mean, it's up there, like, the heat is still going, you know. I mean, it's, it's there. The flavors besides the heat and spice is just a, um, just a
it's like a like a leathery kind of taste. You know, the sweetness is is gone completely. Uh, but now it's just a nice leather and, and some heat on the back end. You can feel it. You know, all down here. You know, this one does go all down in your throat now. But we're getting toward the end of it, and I, I kind of expected that because I was getting some spice notes earlier. So that's pretty much where we at. But uh, hey, nice smoke. You know, it's not a it's not a a power bomb. You know, it's definitely not what I would consider to be a full body stick. I guess you could consider uh, the heat. You know, the spice heat. You know, I guess you could kind of consider that getting full, but. It's still a medium stick, but it's got that spice done got heavy, definitely. And I like spice, but I like spice with sweet. And this is more uh, toward this third. It's more spice with leather, you know, leather and just a kind of an earthy kind of taste, you know. So, but still nice. If you like spice, you got another, you know, 10, 15 minutes here. Uh, but for me, this is where I'm gonna put it down. But it was definitely great. I enjoyed it. I'm enjoying it now, but I didn't had it. <laughs> I didn't had enough. You know, the spice is there, but I'm good. So, thanks for watching. Check out my new videos. Subscribe to my channel. Check me out on Instagram at Cigar Culture. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Holla back.